when you were gods and monsters. Because no one else would have us. Surprise, Jason. This is your show. Tell us what to do. No! <laughs> I don't know why I'm suddenly nervous. This is fucking weird. Thrill me. Movie. 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 Misfits. 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 It got me hard, so. All right. Yeah, I think we should start now. Welcome. I am John Spooky Rhodes, and with me is the crippled one himself, Cody, the real-life heel, Corley, and, of course, with us is the ancient intergalactic deity himself, Jason, I don't have a nickname, Gray, and we are the movie Misfits. Because no one else would have us. <laughs> <laughs> in a roundabout way, you're kind of right. I mean, uh, and first and foremost, I introduced us that way because, A, I may be a recognizable voice. Probably not. But uh, we're all hosts. We're, we're all equal here. It's not like, hi, I'm John Rose. I'm your host. And joining me in these pissants uh, back here, they're... They're they're just here to kind of laugh at my jokes. No, that's not it. We're we're one. We are all you, fucking misfits. You did call me a piss at one time before we started recording. So hey, uh, I that, said that's... not to fucking say that story on air. Shit, shit. You told me that's right. You told me I'd be the movie reject if I said that. Sorry. <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, but uh, Jason, you bring up an excellent point about no one else really having us, and uh, I I don't know if I I told everyone here this story but um some of you may or may not know i'm actually a former host of rabbit and red radio a long time pioneer of horror radio blah 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 but in the process of leaving that myself and the current host mike sankovich we're having conversations back and forth about me possibly taking over the show as mine and him not being involved and you know i was kind of reluctant to that but I came around to it, and the idea formed in my head. It's like, well, if I did it, I like a trio. I like a three-man group, and I would bring Jason and Cody on. And that idea has kind of always stuck with me. And some of you may or may not know also that Mike, now doing the show, has kind of had some personal struggles and really a lot of stuff going on at home that's kind of delayed him from putting out episodes. So originally... The concept behind this was going to be, this was going to be a fill-in episode of Rabbit and Red Radio, but he's back, he's rebooted it again, and again, and again. Hopefully this host actually knows something about horror, but that's yet to be seen, really. Uh, anyway, I love this idea so much that I had to ask these guys, are you still on board? Do you still want to do it? And they agreed. So... This misfit project just seemed right that these guys that have all been part of shows but no one really knows and have just kind of been kicked around should come together. We are fucking misfits. Damn right. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> I felt worse in high school. <laughs> Haven't we all? Shit, man, it was yeah. fucking high school. God damn. But yeah, imagine being in high school crippled. I well, got called worse. <laughs> So, you know, Cody, you were on Rabbit and Red with us a couple times, and you have your own show with Mike called The Shutter Showdown, right? Yeah, not the, but just Shutter Showdown. And, Jason, uh, you had a great solo cast there for a while, The Bloodstream, and then you were or are part of a show with Bo, right? Is that still uh, a thing? Yeah, as... As far as I know, it's still going on. We just uh, kind of on a break right now because comics have kind of dried up due to everything going on in the world right now. Right. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure. I actually loved that show. I haven't really been following comics regularly, but, you know, you guys were kind of my news source, and it was cool. Well, hopefully we're back sooner than later. Yeah. I mean, this is... This is really a crazy fucking time in the world right now where everyone's on quarantine. I mean, we are literally 
living through a chapter in a history book yet to be written. And I literally just made that up. That's fucking cool. I like that saying. But anyway. <laughs> and you know, John, uh, I just like to add, um, people who are disabled, who are on, you know, Social Security, SSI, financially speaking, we haven't been impacted negatively at all by this pandemic. However, we were also given a free $1,200 stimulus check. And you know what? Me and you, we have our little debates about patriotism and all that. But man, when I saw that 1200 hit my bank account, I was like, John was right. I probably should be a little bit more patriotic. So thank you, John Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have to admit the the whole pandemic really hasn't affected my life a whole lot because I am an essential employee of the state of Pennsylvania. So literally all it's meant is I can't go grocery shopping after work or really get the food that I want while I'm at work. So, eh. Mm. But it has brought up uh, some interesting conversations at work and whatnot. And, And a friend and I were talking and it came up, what was the last movie that you saw in a theater. And, you know, I really had to fucking think about that because it's, it's, it's been so long now, but I don't know about you guys, but for myself, it was the invisible man. Did you guys see Same that? for me? I literally saw it before, uh, my state started locking stuff down. So it stuck in my memory. I knew it was going to be the last thing I saw. Well, that was a good pick. Cody, do you even remember yours? Shut <laughs> But I, I, you guys are going to laugh at me, but the last movie I went and seen was Sonic the Hedgehog. That was in February. I'm not going to laugh at you. I actually considered it. It was good. Yeah, it got good reviews and, you know, whatever. It looked fun. You know, I, it, I don't I, always have I, to go for big blockbusters or horror movies. Sometimes it's just, it can be fun. It, um, well, no, this was a big blockbuster movie. It was made for like, I think almost a hundred million dollars. So it was a huge budget movie, but, uh, and I won't get too far into it because this is not what this podcast is about, but I tell you as, as a kid's movie, it did not insult your intelligence as an adult. It, it was definitely 50, 50 for kids and adults. And it was very enjoyable. Hell yeah. Well, the last one for me was the invisible man. And, you know, I guess I'll touch upon that a little bit before kind of move on. Uh, I actually thought it was pretty effective. I enjoyed it overall. Really, the only thing I could point out or have really to say about it was uh, I thought the ending was a little off. It felt like it almost betrayed the overall story. I don't know if you agree or not, Jason, but that that was kind of my take on it. it. It almost felt like she then became a future villain. Uh... No, I can kind of see where you're going with that. Um, but I think the main narrative of the story really needed her to have her revenge. But I do also like that it can go forward with her as either or, really, depending on how they want to go with it. Right. I would kind of like to, to debate that with you. It's a little bit, but I, I want to play it a little yeah. coy because, you know, it's still pretty fresh and... I don't want people to be listening to this and be like, oh, shit, I can't listen. They, they're going to spoil it. And, and we're not. Um, but after that, there was a lot of debate about Blumhouse or other, probably Universal, trying to bring back the Universal monsters, quote unquote, and updated reboots, much in the fashion of The Invisible Woman, which was basically uh, they took The Invisible Man and put him into a story around... Uh, an abusive relationship updated it for real world situations that people can kind of relate to so that got me kind of thinking how would you guys want to see the universal monsters rebooted and cody i I think this is going to be interesting with you because you're not that familiar with them you really only know them as a, a concept because they are so famous Right. I, oh man, I'll go let Jason go first because I don't even know what fucking say because yeah, I know hardly nothing about any of this, but go ahead, Jason. All right. When I was in the theater, I was sitting there watching the movie and thinking, um, I really liked the take they went with for the invisible man, making it technological because fears over technology are really big right now. Right. Even if, you know, a guy in a camouflaged suit isn't going to be a major concern in the real world 
uh, taking the universal monsters and kind of giving them a more techno panic update was something that my mind really latched onto. Uh, okay, that's you could go you could go that route easily with Frankenstein. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he is a science experiment gone wrong. Uh, uh, comes back to life and you know wreaks havoc. Uh, and you can. I also like that. Um, you can keep up with the feminine themes with uh, kind of an update on Bride of Frankenstein if you go that route. The only one that I couldn't really make work. I mean, I can come up with any sort of experiment or stuff with like um, the Wolfman or a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon. But I just can't quite come up with a good idea for the mummy. So <laughs> four out of five ain't bad, right? All right. Well, that that one's kind of a bitch because I, I was sitting here after we kind of decided upon it. And I was going through my head how I would kind of do it. And the mummy, for a, a good update and, and to kind of level it in issues of today, I can't really come up with anything. Um, because it, it's such an odd story that... I mean, really, the only thing you could kind of tie it into is, like, pandemics and world crises and shit like mm -hmm. that. But I, for a good story, I don't think it works. I think for The Mummy, you really just have to keep it fucking simple and have it be supernatural, which is something they've kind of toyed with, but really played kind of vague uh, with Mummy movies. I mean, it's usually just The Mummy trying to kill people or amass an army when... I think it should be, be the mummy trying to come back to life and using supernatural forces. But, yeah, that that one's a bitch. <laughs> and there, there's really no good way to kind of go a feminist angle with it. The, no. best, the best kind of social commentary you could make with it is using it to talk about tomb raiding and grave robbing sort of stuff and how uh, certain empire-like cultures have a tendency to claim artifacts as their own and that can tie back into the the curse of the mummy and sort of stuff like that yeah i mean the mummy is just a very hard one to, to try yeah. and do and, Cody, and no I, matter what you're going to get compared to the 1999 mummy oh right right um fuck cody i'll i'll, I'll save you a little bit of time i'll let you kind of think this over and i'm, I'm gonna I'm going to go here just a, a little bit. So in, in keeping with uh, the the social commentary and whatnot, I was thinking Dracula would be a perfect one because you can go with him being Dracula, suave and whatnot, keep it modern day, and it can all be about, you know, um, sexual harassment in the workplace and everything because Dracula has always been a very sexual creature. The story's always been very sensual so they they keep in vain i i think that's how it should be is you know kind of uh modern business and he's just kind of a sexual predator throughout it and you could involve date rape and shit like that uh, there's a lot that you could kind of touch upon with dracula i think the me too movement <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> uh one you didn't touch upon jason uh the wolfman I think you could really use that for social commentary on PTSD and anger management issues mm -hmm. like that, because yeah. that that's what he is. He's uh, an id gone wild, just pure rage, uh, a hairy Hulk, if you will, for the comic yeah. book nerds out there. <laughs> like, I mean, you can uh, do stuff with uh, genetic experimentation there. Um, PTSD is a really good way to take it. Um, uh, Oh, what's the word? Uh, triggers. Uh, not right. necessarily in the I've been triggered sort of sense, both the pejorative way of using that and the actual proper way of using it. But you can kind of tie it in with that and have him, you know, uh, <clears throat> I really hate saying have him get triggered by the moon, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you have to have that scene. It's a fucking werewolf yeah. movie. So, but uh, Frankenstein, um, it, I mean, you could really just touch upon the whole medical aspect because that's the healthcare system and all that that's such a huge issue right now and, mm -hmm. and you can also touch upon people's reaction to those that are different mm -hmm. <clears throat> what do you mean by different john 
Oh, uh, 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 nothing there. Yeah, John. Old... What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, John? Uh, I I think that is actually something a lot of people could empathize with. Is all I was getting at there, guys. What kind of people, John? <laughs> Misfits. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, and, and then you know like creature from the black lagoon i probably wouldn't touch that because uh it, it won an oscar a couple years ago and there's really yeah, no really. reason <laughs> but there's definite environmental angles you can go with that if you want to oh great point i didn't even fucking think about that but yeah that that's that's a great fucking point god damn you <laughs> so then for somebody who isn't familiar at all and really doesn't give a fuck about these what would you actually be interested in seeing cody from any of these because you have an understanding you know the concept you've just probably never seen the 1930 and 40 original films yeah no i haven't i the only thing close to any of this that i've ever seen is i've seen um young frankenstein which that's no nowhere near anything that's the gene wilder film fantastic that's fucking nothing. movie though yeah it is fantastic and then um frankenstein the, the, the mummy huh frankenstein yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then as far as the mummy goes the only one i fucking seen was the brandon Fraser one is that oh. his name Ooh. Yeah, you got it right. I was really afraid you were going to say the Tom Cruise one there for a second. No, I didn't even see that one. <laughs> um, oh, man, what would I fucking do? Uh, you know, the Frankenstein concept was always unique to me because as inherently he's a freak of nature, right? Right. And that's kind of – does does that play into it later on in the original film that he's a freak of nature and somehow? Um, He has a lot of uh... – kind of struggles kind of figuring out what he is um the first film doesn't really get into that a whole lot I, i'd honestly say the second one is really where it deep dives into his character i know that they've done you know they did frankenstein and then Bra bride of frankenstein correct right. but what if you know if they rebooted all this what if they started with female first what if frankenstein was a female and it was hormonal like type of you know stuff and then down the line you know the 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 husband of frankenstein or whatever it would be called kind of flop it right the there yeah flipping the rolls a little bit as far as uh i agreed a lot with what you were saying about the drag i think that'd be the easiest to do in today's world you know especially with uh today's technology um and 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 like you said, and I know you strayed away from it just a little bit, but think about the possibilities of like, what if he thought he was going after females and it was actually like a transgender that he went after? What if, you know what I mean? What you, we, there's all kinds of possibilities that you could uh, put into a, a new age Dracula movie and cause, not controversy, but cause friction within the movie itself between the characters that is unique to today's society compared to in the past. That's an excellent point because, you know, Dracula is hundreds of years old, so keeping up with the times would be difficult so even just having that as one scene would be interesting you know and it should be represented establish him as a villain right off the bat because uh you know and i agree with this you there shouldn't be there's no room at all in this world for prejudice you know against the uh, you know the lgbtq uh community or anything like that and if you saw dracula be a dick no pun intended, uh, right off the bat with that type of subject, um, I think it'd be a unique opening. Like, um, and, and I know this is going to sound silly, but the last iteration of anything Dracula related that I uh, became acquainted with was the um, Castlevania anime that's on Netflix. And John, if you haven't seen that, it is a fantastic show. Jason, have you saw that? I have not yet. It's on my very long list of things to do. No, I'm telling you guys, the writing on that show is amazing. It um it prioritizes uh, storytelling and character development over action and stuff for you know the ADD crowd. It really, <laughs> if you stick with it, if you stick with it, you will love it. It I, it kind of reminds me of the Hannibal TV series. You know, like that was a I think that was an NBC uh yep. show, and it it only had three seasons. Have you seen that one, Jason? Yes, I have. Exactly. So, and you know what I mean, right? By how 
<laughs> Hannibal took a while to get started. And you might see an episode or two where you think afterwards, like, man, that wasn't very interesting. But I'm mm-hmm. telling you, if you stick with that shit, it, it, it has a better impact by the end of all three of those seasons than any kind of crap like The Walking Dead or anything like that. Because let's be honest, The Walking Dead has been reduced to action sequence after action sequence. The Walking Dead sucks. That's just my opinion. But when it comes to stuff like like Hannibal, the TV show, like that, as I've gotten older, you guys, I definitely want to see character development and, and plot details and, you know, just all that more so than action first. So, yeah, anyway, Castlevania, if you two get around to seeing it, Definitely character development and story over anything else. And if you are okay with that, it's... Jason, I know you'll love it because you could handle... Did you like Hannibal? Yes, loved it. One of my favorite shows of the last 10 years. Exactly. So if you like that, you Castlevania, especially the the second... Oh, wait, no, was it the third season? Shit, how many seasons do we have right now? I think season... I think two seasons or three seasons. But it's amazing. Uh, John, it's amazing. Watch I've seen it. the first season, actually, so. Oh, okay, awesome. So yeah. did you like it? I did All like right. it, yeah, yeah, I was on board. See, my fellow misfits, do you see how I try to um, sway the, the subject off to something else? Because I don't know shit <laughs> about the fucking universal um, world. But um, I, I'm not the biggest anime fan, but the head writer on it is one of my all-time favorite comic book writers. So I have a lot of interest in checking it out for him. For Castlevania, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, man. It, it's amazing. Like, I, I, I slammed through an entire season with one of my friends just a couple of weeks, just a couple of months ago. Um, and it only took five hours. But five hours, it was so good. It mm-hmm. felt like it was only two and a, two hours that we were watching it. That's how amazing that show is. But, um, yeah, it dra- the, out of all of them, John, the Dracula concept is the only one that I'm even close to being familiar with. And like I said, Frankenstein, it's only because... Uh, I grew up with, uh, I didn't grow up with, but I watched Young Frankenstein quite a bit as a kid. The other ones, I can't say anything about because I've never seen Wolfman. I've never seen Creature from the Black Lagoon. I, I don't even know what any of those are about. No. Um, well, I have to ask then, have you seen the Monster Squad? I mean, because they're, they're all in that. It's not their actual I Universal have- Monsters, but... I have, but I didn't see. I watched it back in 2012 because uh, I watched it on FearNet. Does anyone oh, remember that? Net- fuck yeah, I, I remember do. FearNet. Uh, yeah. FearNet and so, Chiller. Yeah, Chiller. Yes. Ch- you know what? I liked it because a lot of people hated Chiller, but but I liked Chiller because they had they had more diverse programming than FearNet. The only problem was this Chiller was not in HD. So it looked terrible on a widescreen, you know, HD TV. Um, and then what happened was FearNet, their, the parent company, I think it was Comcast, they got bought out by NBC Universal. And NBC Universal owned Chiller. And the plan was to put the two channels together, almost like G4 Tech TV, if, if oh. anyone remembers that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even get me started on how butthurt I still am about G4 being gone. Attack oh, of the G4 Show. G4 was yeah. awesome. Yes, fucking Attack of the Show. Hell yeah, man. Fucking Kevin Pereira and all that shit. Man, I... Olivia I, Munn. I sometimes... Yeah, Olivia Munn. I tell you guys how many times I jerked it to the thought of Olivia Munn. Uh, and to a lesser extent, uh, Candace Bailey uh, later on in the show. But, um... The thing is, is like I get bored and I'll look at old school G4 slash AOTS clips on YouTube and it's just like, oh my God, I want this channel back. But I digress. Um, Killer was supposed to become one with FearNet. Neither one of the channels were supposed to go away. It was supposed to be a merger like G4 Tech TV was. Um, and then it was supposed to turn Justin back into Chiller, but Chiller would have all of the rights and all the licenses that uh, FearNet had for quite a while, um, and it just never happened because then I think not even a year later, Chiller got shut down as well. Uh, so that fucking sucks. But here we are now, and I, I'm not—I don't mean to plug my own show, but you got Shutter. Now, which is fucking amazing. Everyone should go subscribe to that and listen to Shutter Showdown. Watch it, whatever. Um, the Universal stuff goes. That's pretty much all I can milk out of this subject. I uh, One of these days in the future, I might check out some stuff. But uh, 
Yeah, that's really all I know. I know this. If they up, did update some things, I um, I know The Invisible Man is out, and uh, that's on Fandango now, which is the app I use to rent movies. I might check it out one of these days. It's, it's but, worth uh, seeing. I, I believe, if memory serves, I gave it uh, four or four and a half stars. So Yeah. I was talking to some dumb bitch on uh, Plenty of Fish a few weeks ago, and she told me to check out The Invisible Man. Uh, and I was going to, but... Uh, yeah, I stopped talking to that dumb bitch. You want to know why, John? Why? Because she was 23 years old with three burden babies, and that's disgusting to me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason, people, that at the beginning, I introduced him as the real-life heel. He enjoys. Yeah. He gets off on pissing you off. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that in our show, too, because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, first episode, I got to get my propaganda out there. Got to get people to know who I am. <laughs> so, no, you you actually bring up something kind of interesting because really we kind of went around the Universal Monsters, um, but you brought up television and when you were talking about how The Walking Dead's kind of crap anymore and, you know, I kind of have to agree, it's fallen off. Uh, but... For the longest time, I've kind of had a thought as to what I would like to see put on TV. So I'm just going to toss it out there real quick because you were talking that you like character development now and you want it kind of drawn out and whatnot. And I might get kicked for this, whatever, but I would actually love to see Phantasm retold as a long form television series. That's it. Jason, kick him now. Kick him. <laughs> no, I am so down for that. Okay. Damn so, it. And it's called Supernatural. Yes and no, because the franchise is so cult, I really mm -hmm. think you could get away with doing it as a TV series, where literally you're spending an entire season to tell the story of one movie, and then you can yep. fill in the gaps in between with a full season, and... You know, just tell it modern day, instead of having the, the CUDA, they could have a, a brand new, you know, Challenger Hellcat and make the kids a little bit older. And, you know, Reggie can can be like a, a former military guy, which explains why he's a badass, but he just wants to get, you know, fucking high and drunk and be an ice cream man to kind of just chill. But, you know, deep down, he's a badass. I see what you did there. <laughs> Um, you know what show kind of did do that, that you just explained? Uh, they made a From Dusk Till Dawn TV show that lasted mm -hmm. three seasons. It and, only lasted three? Fuck, I was hoping for another one. God damn it. Yeah, no. Well, the point I was making about it was that the very first season, it was basically the whole first movie just dragged out for an entire season. And it was actually well done. I agree, yeah. I, I've seen all three seasons then. I was... I've just lost internet and assumed there was more, and I no, not. They, they they wanted to do more, but they lost. I don't know if they lost some of the cast or what, but yeah, they left the third season open. If I remember correctly, they're supposed to do more. The first season was the best, right. and you know what? The first season kind of stood on its own because the way they ended the first season, you kind of asked yourself, where can we, where can they go from here? Right. So, for anyone listening, uh. If you want to check that show out, just check out the first season. I am only familiar with the show as existing. It's another there with Castlevania that I have to get to at some point. I, I will oh, tell okay. you this to sell you on it. Jake Busey is Sex Machine. Nuff said. <laughs> that was the Savini character? Hell yeah, man. Oh my god. Yeah, that's Jake Busey now. It's great. The first season is fucking great. It, 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 you're basically watching the first movie. It's like, th think about like this, Jason. D have you ever watched the first movie and thought like, man, I would have liked them to spend a little bit more time on this aspect or a little bit more time with that character development or why Richie's a perv and why this yeah. is this way and why the grandpa is so religious and all that. Like mm -hmm. the first season just kind of takes its fucking time. And then by the climax of the first season, you're in the, the, the strip club, which I know well about strip clubs because I fucking love I'm addicted to strip clubs. Anyway, you're into the strip club at the very end of the season, and it, it's, it's great. Like, a lot of it is kind of predictable, but it's not in a bad way, right, John? No, not at all. Um, it, it's still a very fun ride, and they update it enough that it, it keeps you entertained. You're not just sitting there like, I've fucking seen this before. It's not like the, the Psycho right. remake. 
So I don't know. You got check. Jason, I swear to Christ, before our next episode, you better watch Castlevania and um, <laughs> Still Don. I swear. I've got a few movies to watch. I've got to finish the last season of Arrow, and I'll try to remember that. Did you just give up an excuse, Jason? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, if, if you don't mind, John, I got to ask, Jason, because you're a fan of the DC stuff, right, on television? Yes. Are you, because I saw your profile picture, you have a profile picture of Dreamer. She's from Supergirl. Yep. I, I just wanted to sh- put it out there. I'm a huge fan of Supergirl. I'm not afraid to admit cool. that on our debut episode. I no, it's one of my favorite show. shows right now. Yeah, it sucks because the show gets terrible ratings, and mm. I don't know how much longer it's going to last. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to watch all the other ones like Batwoman and Flash and Arrow mm-hmm. and just all that stuff, but but I do watch all of the crossover events. Yeah, or- the, this season's kind of been a bit uneven for a lot of the shows, but I don't want to get into comic book shows because this is not the show for that. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I just wanted um, to throw that out there. But while we're talking here, I want to kind of wind back around to where we were talking with uh, updating Dracula. Ooh, bringing if, it back. Yep. <laughs> um, you were talking about the concept of Dracula as a sexual predator and um, going after women and stuff like that and transgender people. You have got to check out the movie Bit. John has seen me blowing this movie on Instagram. Yes. It is uh, kind of... The craft, but with vampires, if you want to take it that way. The lead character is played by Nicole Maines, who is Dreamer on Supergirl. So tying it all back together. Uh huh. And so you have your transgender character in there. And there is a male vampire that appears. And one of his main failings is using his powers to control women. And they deal with that in an interesting way. Oh, wow. Bit. Right. It's just called yep. Bit. Yep. It just came out, and it's only on uh, VOD right now on uh, okay. Amazon, iTunes, places like that. Real quick here, uh, I know we were talking about movies that we see in the theaters last, but the last movie I rented on VOD was a movie called Porno. Heard of it? Yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> Fuck you, John. Have you heard of Porno? Not. Porno that you're not allowed to watch around your wife. I've heard of it. I have not seen it yet, but yeah, I've, I've heard of it. Fucking wild, man. Uh, these these kids, these religious kids, accidentally unleash a sex demon because they uh, watch a snuff film, and it's just fucking wild. I won't spoil any of the rest of it, but it's worth my six dollars. All right. Well, it, it has to wait because uh, my very next VOD purchase, rent, whatever is going to be Scoob, and I don't give a fuck what anyone has to say about that. I love Scooby-Doo. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, no, if, if I can watch Sonic the Hedgehog, you can watch Scoob, right? I, I'm, I've am i been a Scooby-Doo fan since I can remember, and honestly, it's probably been one of those gateways into to horror for me horror. because right. uh, I, I always watched it as a kid, even though, you know, my first memory of watching a movie was a horror film, but you know, it it just helped reinforce it. You know, it's interesting. You say that because that cartoon shows, there was two of them. There was the Scooby-Doo cartoons, all of the iterations. The one I loved the most was, uh, uh, the 13 ghosts, 13 ghosts. Yeah. That was a good one. Cause those seemed more intense than the others. And I don't, if I remember correctly, those ones, there wasn't a mask pull off at the end. It was actually yeah, it real was all, ghosts. Yeah. It was all supernatural. And that's why that one was really different. Yeah. So I liked that one the best, but I liked the classic, you know, Scooby Dooby Doo, you know, that one. <laughs> but I, that's what got me into horror. It was Scooby Doo cartoon and uh, the real Ghostbusters. And if you remember, there was also one in the 80s. Or was it the early 90s? It was called Mighty Max. Have you heard of that one? I have not, no. It's just heard of it, game. haven't seen it. Yeah, that, that seems to be the theme, right, with you, Jason, on our <laughs> yep. Beer episode. <laughs> heard it, haven't seen it yet. Um, but no, Mighty There's Max a was... a lot just, of TV. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mighty Max was just a show about this teenage kid. He was voiced by the same voiced Raphael in the 1980s Ninja Turtles cartoon, and he just had a red cap on, and he would just battle these fucking monsters and that's all i remember from it because it never got re-released on anything since then just a fucking kid he wore a white shirt with an m on it and he had a, a red cap 
with an M on it too, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's just called Mighty Max, I believe. But um, yeah, I those remember shows, the toys. Yeah, I had the toys too. That seems to be that's all the cartoons were for the '80s, right? Just to sell toys. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, real Ghostbusters and the Scooby Doo, all of the iterations of Scooby Doo cartoons. That's what got me comfortable first and foremost with the horror genre. And then after that, my parents were stupid enough to let me watch Nightmare on Elm Street and, and Friday the Thirteenth and all that. And I started having nightmares. But you know, we'll go there another episode. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I think this could be a really interesting subject to kind of talk about the the whole gateway aspect, and uh, it brings up something that I, I want to touch upon later. So. Okay. Uh, let's put a pin in that. We'll tack that up on a bunch of bullshit that we'll probably forget about. And we're going to take a break and we will be right back after this. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. <laughs> Anyone actually need a break? I'm going to go pee due to boredom. I have to pee. Do it. Now? No, fucking tomorrow. Whenever the fuck you want. Come on, man. Jesus Christ. Do it now. Do it. Right, Do up. it now. Shut up. Here we go. All right, everyone. This is Cripple Cody. Welcoming you guys back to Movie Misfits. John, thank you very much for letting me reel it back in. I had to beg you for it in the break. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, as long as the check comes in the mail, that's all that matters. <laughs> So, we're here at the round table, is what we want to call this, and that's because all of us bring something that we want to discuss, and uh, since we were talking about Universal remakes, we thought we'd talk about remakes now, and off air, we we, we discussed what we were going to bring, and the crippled fucker here actually won it, so he's going to go last, and we will discuss his, but uh, first Wait, and foremost... I well, won, so I go last? Yeah, because it's going to be a, a, a larger discussion than just a quick little one-off, so. You fuck, you know cripple people are supposed to be up at the front of the line, right? Oh, fuck that, man. I park in your goddamn parking <laughs> spot. <laughs> All right, anyway, go. <laughs> but no, uh, just going real quick, uh, Jason, you mentioned Mother's Day, right? Yes. So, why did you want to kind of touch upon that one? Uh, well, largely it, yeah, because when we were going to start recording, it was before Mother's Day, but life happened. Right. Um, so, Mother's Day was right around the corner. I was thinking of the two movies because I was going to share them with some friends, and they were just on my mind. All right. So, out of those two, I have to ask, which do you prefer? Because... To be completely honest, I've never seen the original. I've only ever seen the remake. Ah, uh, I kind of lean towards the remake just because it's a uh, slightly more polished movie. All right, all right. Uh, I I know the original's kind of comedic, and I do prefer the the straight yeah. up seriousness of of the the remake. So I don't know. I'm just not the biggest fan of trauma. So I think that's that- fair. That might be holding me back from, from the original. Yeah, the original has that veneer of uh, trauma sleaze and grime and counterculture sort of stuff going for it. All right, all right. And I, I do have to tell you, man, since you brought it up, you really got me thinking about it. I actually purchased it, and the Blu-ray just actually came in the mail today. <laughs> cool. And... We were talking about remakes, and the one that I brought to the table was the blob because i i think it's one of the best remakes probably ever it's fantastic but mm-hmm. it didn't win plain and simple so if you haven't seen it i think you're wrong and you need to fucking fix that because the blob is amazing if you are aware at least what the blob is and appreciate 80s horror films slashers and stuff like that you will 100 percent not be disappointed with that version of the blob i mean come on you have gore, children being eaten, and a conspiracy. What more do you need? Fun for the whole family. Absolutely, especially that sewer scene. But, Cody, you're done rolling around on the floor, so you're up, man. You're the winner. You, you won. What are we discussing? Real 
quick. Is that why I just saw you laughing? Because I had to jump off the computer real quick. <laughs> And that's I why we were phone. a little distracted. Someone... I think both Jace and I were just like, should we be concerned? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, I'm the professional. Like, there's some hesitation, no. and I'm just like, fuck it. I don't care, man. We're still going. <laughs> I, I turn my ringer off, and I turn everything off on my phone so just in case someone tries to call me during a recording. And I noticed that someone was leaving me a voicemail, so I figured while you two were over there jerking each other off on Mo- Mother's Day or whatever, I figured I'd go check and see who called me real quick. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, and God, I don't mean to like call an, et- an audit on my own choice here or anything like that, but everything that you just said about the blob can also exactly to a T be said about the remake of John Carpenter's The Thing from right. 1982. I was going to say that. Yeah. That's a fucking... I mean, that wasn't... That's not a, That's not the movie I'm going to talk about, but for just real quick, that that is a fucking amazing movie. I don't know why I didn't think of that before we started recording, but... To be honest, thing. I mean, you're right. When, when remakes come up, that needs to be discussed. And I think it, it is so fucking good that people don't even really associate it as a remake, they just think of John Carpenter's The Thing. They don't think of The Thing from Another World. It so eclipses it that right. it doesn't even exist. Right. And it's such a damn shame that that movie, because it didn't make that much money, and it didn't get critical appraise or anything like that uh, back when it came out in 82. No, right? that's, that's fucking Spielberg's fault right there, because he had to drop E.T. the same fucking year, and everyone's like, ooh, I want the cuddly alien, ooh, phone home. And then Carpenter's like, right. no, no, this alien's gonna fucking eat you and the world. Yeah, but yeah, um, I totally agree. Like, I actually didn't even know that John Carpenter's The Thing was a remake of another movie until, like, uh, just a few years ago, honest to God. I don't know why I never knew that. I just thought that that movie was an original movie. And then they came out with the prequel in 2011, which I need to rewatch again, but I heard it was terrible, so I don't know. It's not bad, uh, to be honest. I, I think the biggest critique of it is the CGI and mm-hmm. in all honesty, that's just the studio's fault because if you watch behind the scenes stuff or read anything about it, they went almost completely practical. And then the studio said, no, audiences like CGI and made them put CGI over top of the practical effects. So maybe, yeah. fingers crossed, there'll be a release one day where we'll actually get the fucking practical side of it. Right. It's kind of like hoping that they're going to release the completely uncensored version of Event Horizon one oh, day. Oh, God. If fucking only. Right. Can uh, I go ahead. Can I divert slightly before we get into your, your pick? Yep, go ahead. I, I don't want to go too much into this, but just since we're talking John Carpenter and remakes, someone's going to give me hell for this. But one movie that needs to be remade, they live. <sighs> Uh, mm. That movie is more relevant today than it was in the 80s. You're and there right. is so much more you could say about the world right now if you remade that movie and did it right. I would almost want to see that as a TV series or, or That's a, also like a, a, a mini series or, you know. Yeah. Am I wrong about this? Is, is that the one with Rowdy Piper in it? Fuck yeah. Yes. Okay. And that's the one where he creates the line, I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum, that one, right? Yes. Yeah, and what's so fucking great about that, most of those one-liners were Roddy's. He he just right. he used to keep a fucking notebook of one-liners to say during uh, interviews and stuff for wrestling. And yeah. he, he just went up to John Carpenter one day and was just like, hey, can I say this line? Or it just They started going through the book and plugging in lines and scenes. Piper was a promo, man. Like, I, we, we won't, you know, turn it, this into a wrestling convo, but, man, if you ever saw Rowdy Piper as a performer in the WWE, like, my God, he he captivated an audience for better or for worse, you know, when he was on the microphone. Oh, he was one of the best heels on the fucking mic. I mean, right. he, he's no Jake the Snake, but he was fucking fantastic. Well, Fuck, and again, we'll, we'll, we won't, you know, continue to talk about this, but have you been seeing Jake the Snake tear it up on AEW on oh, the microphone? I'm all about AEW, man. Fucking yeah. all the way. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I love Jake the Snake. But anyway, you guys want to continue to commandeer my time? No, I'm all done. I just want to throw that out there before we move on from Carpenter. The show is all yours. Anyway, um, so my pick that I wanted to talk about was uh, was the remake, the 2013 remake of Evil Dead. 
Um, that movie, like, we all really fucking, John, stop making faces. <laughs> we all, uh, we were all skeptical of that film at first, right? Like, I was a little skeptical because we all knew Bruce Campbell wasn't going to play Ash in it. And if you think back, this was like the first time they were going to do anything Evil Dead without Ash. So I was really and, – and another thing for me was they they took this movie right to the MPAA and you found out right off the bat that some things had to be cut. But what upset me was the director at that time said, well, this new cut by the MPAA, this is my preferred cut anyway. And at that time I was thinking, motherfucker, no it isn't. Like you <laughs> – you have an unrated version that you want to release down the line, and, and and they he denied it. You know, it's it's politics in Hollywood. You know, the the directors and all that they have to go along with what they need to say, what the studio wants them to say, and probably what the MPAA wants them to say too. By the way, has it been shortened to just MPA? Uh, Not that I'm aware of. No, I, I think it's still the MPAA. Because when I went and seen Sonic the Hedgehog uh, a couple of months ago, I was seeing previews like the little fan like little picture cards screen that you see and it just said mpa.com and i'm thinking why is it not mpaa anymore so uh, probably somebody actually has the the rights to that website and they oh can. <laughs> i don't know uh, if anyone's listening and wants to correct me on that do it because i'd love to know what the truth is about that is has it been cut down to the MPA oh, shit. Or you know what you know what it is um i figured it out it's uh it's your crippled fucking eyes that's that's what the problem is oh i thought you were gonna say something informative and it was just a dipshit <laughs> joke thanks john <laughs> anyway um man evil dead 2013 it's almost a perfect paced movie as a horror film almost you know you you start off with these group of characters it makes sense in today's world, it, it's even more relevant now with the, the heroin epidemic that goes on everywhere these days and just everything. It's more even more relevant now than it was, was what was it, seven, eight years ago that movie came out? Seven. 2013. So seven, seven yeah, years. I know math's um, hard. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, hell, I'm handicapped, so give me a fucking break, John. <laughs> but uh, it, it made sense why the characters went to the cabin. They were trying to get their friends sober. And... In the beginning, you didn't even know that she was the fucking protagonist of the show. Like, you didn't even know she was the main star. You thought it was her brother, you know? Uh, it perfectly paced the movie in my eye, in my eyes. They, the gore effects was on fucking point. The, the, I thought the plot was decent enough. Yet again, yes, you could predict it. It was predictable. As long as you were an Evil Dead fan, you could predict everything, for the most part, that was going to happen. You know, this movie didn't just rely on blood spewing everywhere, although it did have a lot of that, but it also relied on growth moments, you know, like like fingernails getting broke or the, the when the, the needles went in that guy's eye and he oh, had to God. pull it out. Like cringe, cringe worthy moments that wasn't just blood and guts spewing all over the place. Um, but this movie had a little bit of everything in it, maybe with the exception of, of humor. You know, but then again, the original Evil Dead didn't have very much humor, intentional humor anyway, for the most part. Um, I liked the characters in this movie. Uh, there wasn't hardly any of them that I that were annoying to me or that I disliked. I liked all of it. Um, I, the only thing, I mean, it's, it, I know, like, spoilers, but this is a fucking seven-year-old movie. So, guys, if you haven't seen this movie, fucking go watch it, right? I'll spoil it all for you. I don't give a fuck. I'm the rebellious one of us three misfits. Oh, no. Anyway. No, we're, we're fucking spoiling this. I mean, yeah. if you haven't seen it, uh, that's your fault. Yeah. But um, the only thing I would have changed, and I don't know if I would have changed this for, like, the sake of longevity of the movie making sense to people much so as i would just wanted to i just wanted to get a pop in the movie theater i wanted bruce campbell's ash to show up at the end of the film and all of a sudden save her at the end of the film like imagine if you were in a movie theater did you go to the theater to see it john are you kidding me i was so fucking pumped for this that i drove a little over an hour about an hour and a half to Erie to be able to see it at a midnight screening, the very first showing in my area that I could, all right? Not only did I do that, I cosplayed as Ash to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
And to go further than that, I watched it as much as I could in theaters <laughs> until it was out. I think I saw it at least four times in theaters. So, yes, okay. to answer your question, I did see it in theaters. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I figured that out a minute ago, but yeah. Um, but anyway, what kind of rush do you would have got if at, by, at the end of the movie you were exhausted but in a good way of everything that the movie has taken you through, but then all of, out of nowhere all of a sudden Ash makes it. You know, that – the movie theater would have erupted if you know if you were in, in front of a type of crowd that I was, you know, for the movie experience. Like everyone would have went fucking crazy. I'll tell you how I know because at the end of the film, post credits, when Ash did show up for a cameo, everyone did fucking pop big time. Absolutely, it was um, like a wrestling month. I agree and disagree because I, I think it would have done a disservice to the story to have Ash show up to save her. I agree. Yeah. And that's um, what I'm saying. I don't think like so much for the longevity of like I you can't show your kids or your grandkids this like 20, 30 years down the line and, and expect them to understand why it was important that this guy who you don't even know in this movie at all shows up at the end. So, yeah, I agree with you. It, it would have got a pop from us. But I'm ultimately I'm glad they actually did not go that route. I have to ask right here. Um, have you seen the extended cut? Yes, I own it on Amazon Prime. Okay. It, it is obviously my preferred cut. Um, so the scene that was exercised, the, the mid credit scene where the old man picks her up, I personally would have preferred if that was Bruce Campbell. That would have been cool. Yeah, but would it have been cool if he was as Ash or not as Ash? Maybe I, just I Bruce think it, I think it should have been Ash. I think he should have shown up as Ash. Maybe subtle, though, like people who get it. OK, they got yeah, it. But yeah. Who no, you don't have to call it out. You don't have to, to advertise it. It's just it's Bruce Campbell. He has a prosthetic hand. And oh, mm-hmm. my God, let me help you. Puts her into the car and drives away. She could say something and just just do the lingering shot on his face and, and end with the groovy. That's all you need. And, you know, it would have went well with the shit, the gags that they were doing in the original Evil Dead trilogy, because I mean, a Hills Have Eyes poster show up in the original. So, I mean, it would have, it kind of would have been a nice nod to like having something in in the movie, but like you wouldn't have known. If someone wouldn't have pointed out to you, hey, that's the character from the original franchise, like you wouldn't have known. And you'd just been like, oh, that's cool. That guy has a a stump for a hand and he has a a shotgun and a chainsaw in the back of his truck. Like, you know, yeah, so yeah, they should have done that. Did you notice that his, his car is still at the cabin? Yes, I yeah, and that's only in the extended cut, right? No, 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 it's or in the theatrical. Oh, okay. I can tell you this, and um, I know recently it it has come up again, but uh, it was actually me that broke this story. God, back when this film just came out, uh, I was doing a podcast with Mike Sankovich called "The Morbidly Made," and we interviewed Fide Alvarez, and he told me during that interview that the original idea that they were working towards at that point in time because the entire time he was in contact with Sam Raimi working on it and the idea was that part two was going to set up Mia meeting Ash so part two would lead in to Evil Dead 3 slash Army of Darkness 2 where the two came together and it was a shared universe whatever that was their idea that's what they were working towards at the time i wonder why because evil dead 2013 made decent money right and it had a decent response from critics and viewers i wonder why they never went with the sequel uh who knows man i i wish i had a fucking answer every time something like that comes up because so many times that that questions arise, and I I just don't know. It's got to be the money, man. That's that's all I can fucking think of. I know they were talking about it, but then something fell apart. I don't remember what it was, and Ash versus Evil Dead got started up, and at that point it just kind of all collapsed. Right, and they they poured everything into Ash versus Evil Dead because they they were hoping that that they they said right off the bat that they had a certain amount of seasons that they wanted to do, and it I think it was like five. Five seasons, I think they wanted. I, I, it was four or five. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah, they, they yeah. had it all mapped out. 
because season four was going to be like in future. It was going to that was going to wrap around somehow to eat Army of Darkness. Yeah, uh, in a roundabout way, because they don't actually own the rights to Army of Darkness. Because correct me right. if I'm wrong, but that was that was Universal, right, Jason? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Right. So yeah. they they could only briefly mention it, but yeah, I, I think that was the plan. It's a good cliffhanger, and it ties into the original series, just like the director's cut of Army of Darkness. But it's such a disappointment to us fans too, because we've we've always I, wanted to see that. I, real quick, as a side note about Ash vs. Evil Dead's uh, finale, I I the only thing I would have changed about that final episode is he would have died, and they wouldn't even have done any of the futuristic thing. And then you could have had a bittersweet ending for Ash, and because he gave. A great goodbye to yeah, Pablo did. Kelly and his and his daughter and his, it, I don't know I was in tears at, at that scene. That was the only episode I think put me in tears of that show. But um, B- because yeah, it's, they, it's the fucking end to this hero, this fucking icon that we've followed our entire lives. That I have I've met and, and at the same day you did. Uh, I've got a fucking Bruce Campbell tattoo on me. I mean, how could you not fucking cry? <sighs> Real quick, John, that day that we were both uh, there at Barnes & Noble to meet uh, Bruce Campbell, who, who was it that got shot up to the front of the line? Who I was, was that? I was this little crippled piece of shit. I um, can't remember who it was. I, I just remember sitting there, and I, I was there before them waiting, and all of a sudden this fucking crippled guy gets wheeled right by. It's like, oh, I guess, I guess I'll just fucking stand here. And I tell you what, I have never <laughs> been given more mean looks by random people then, because you're right, those there were people that was already standing around in that Barnes and Noble for two hours, if not more, and then I just get fucking shot right up to the front. Hey, Jason, it's good to be crippled. I just want you to know that about me. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, that was a great fucking day meeting Bruce Campbell. He he was nice, you know. I heard bad things about him, but that's probably just from people like went up to him at five a.m. at a fucking airport or something, you know. Right, I agree. I every celebrity I've met, I've had good interactions with. The only one that I would even question was Kane Hodder, and that that's my own fault. I know I've told that story really? before, but you, you didn't want him to choke you. Well, no, uh, he choked the girl I was with first, and uh. when it was my turn, I stepped up to him and without even really thinking it, I I said it aloud, but it wasn't like loud enough for everyone to hear. But he obviously heard me. It just kind of came out as, huh, I thought you'd be bigger. And then he choked me for the picture, and I couldn't really talk right for the rest of the day. (laughs) Wow. It it wasn't a bad interaction. He was perfectly cool. He was joking around about it, but you could tell. I don't know if he put a little extra oomph in or what, but that was a hell of a fucking choke. I've never been choked that hard in my life. (laughs) Taught you a lesson, boy. (laughs) Definitely. Um, have you seen the, the Kane Hodder documentary? Absolutely. Great fucking documentary. It's fucking great. I, that's another thing that put me into tears at, at certain spots. I never could have imagined that he went through the things that he went through. Oh, uh, it's fucking horrifying. My God. Well, anyway, real quick. Um, my somewhat bad celebrity experience was Tom Savini. But really? I met him twice. Yeah, well, I tell you why. Because the first time I met him was in 07. I was pretty young at that point, And I didn't understand that he wasn't as talkative and happy-go-lucky and outgoing with people as wow. you know some others are. Um, so he was pretty silent when I met him. But then at the Dawn of the Dead 40th anniversary thing that we all went to, I know you were there. I think that was in 2017 or 2018. Um he was there, and I had a good experience. But that, I think that was because, like, I I knew what to expect with him this time around. And he took a picture with me, and and, and so I I kind of wrote it off as like, hey, you know, I was just I was a young little prick, and I don't think I said anything disrespectful to him. But you know, when you're a younger teenager or whatever, you don't know, you know. So, um, yeah, that's really about it. I met Lloyd Kaufman. You brought you brought up Troma earlier, which how dare you say you're not into Troma films? What the fuck? I, not um, all of them. I mean, it, it's it's more the production quality. They're just you're right. Most of them aren't good. No offense, you're but right. they're not. <laughs> have you seen Cannibal the Musical? I have not. No. 
It's a fucking great movie. And Trey Parker and Matt Stone, it's before they started South Park. That's a gem. Jason, have you saw that? <laughs> yep. But, um, I don't know. I met Lloyd Kaufman. Um, but yeah, so I fucking, we got off topic a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm giving well, you the bring it back around sign. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? What, what was we talking about before that? Well, Evil Dead, right? Yes, Evil Dead. Fucking, yeah. I mean, I said pretty much everything that I need to say about that. Uh, I, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> Evil Dead, that's one of the greatest remakes to me. It, it just, it, oh, you're, you're it, putting it, it up there as one of the lived, greatest. Well, it's one, in my opinion, it's one of the greatest horror remakes. I'd say a greatest remake because, you know, I'm not... I don't watch a bunch of other stuff. You know what I mean? I usually stick to horror stuff. But as far as horror remakes, what else? I know we already said The Thing and The Blob, but what else as far as horror remakes can you really think of that that exceeds expectations more so than Evil Dead 2013? Don't even fucking say Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. Don't fucking say it. Um, Jason, exceeds- he said it, you kick him. <laughs> Maniac. He's got a point. Uh, I would I would put the uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake right right up there with the Evil Dead one. I think they're they're pretty even with how fucking good they are. I you know what now that I think about it, you're right about that. I mean, and then they even came out with because the beginning is my favorite. Yeah, that's been getting a lot of love lately, and and uh, I did go back and watch it uh, a few months ago, and it, it is it is fucking good. It feels like there's too much setting up what happened in the first movie but it's it's fucking quality shit man and on top of that you you get the the whole uh slaughterhouse tribute there at the very end all right um did you know that they remade they you know this they remade toolbox murders yeah i think that was in yeah, early Toby 2000s. I mean, no one really talks about that one. That, that was okay yeah it's, it's not know. bad i mean it's better than the original toolbox murders I agree with that. That that's an outdated fucking film, man. Hey, did they real quick before we uh, wrap this up? Did they ever? They remade the Tingler, right? I think so. Yeah. I have no recollection of that whatsoever. I oh mean... man, John, you gotta watch the Tingler. It's, it's a little bit more outdated, but that's a prime example of story over everything. And if you really pay attention, and if you suspend belief long enough to pay attention to what they're selling you, the tingler is a fucking scary movie. If you, if you give into the concept. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. I, I know you got my back on this. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> before we move on from the different remakes and get back to, Evil Dead 2013. Um, one more that we can't leave out is the 1970s Invasion of the Body Snatchers because that's fucking fantastic right there, too. Or, right. or fuck, Cronenberg's The Fly. Oh, fuck. I didn't even think about it. You're right. The Fly is another one that it, it's like John Carpenter's The Thing. It's yeah. like, what do you mean the original? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the Fly, man. The second Fly movie had one of the best head-crushing scenes that I've seen in a while. I, I saw it as a kid. Uh, I could not tell you the last fucking time that I saw that, though. I, I think mm-hmm. the first time was the last time. Dude, I'm telling you, fucking, it, 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 the second one's uncomfortable, and not for good reasons. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't care to see that movie anymore. Jason, what, what's your take on Evil Dead 2013? Uh, sticking with my theme of blasphemy for the night, <laughs> I actually think it's a better movie than the original Evil Dead. I agree. Oof. Let me just clarify. The original Evil Dead is unassailable because without it, we wouldn't have the remake. We wouldn't have so many other movies. But there's this low-budget campiness to it that kind of keeps me a little bit at distance. That the 2013 remake polishes up quite a bit. I and I get that. I really do. I think part of the my love for the original comes from the fact that just the blind ambition there and the uniqueness Absolutely. and the shots and all that is really where so much of my love and admiration comes from for that film. I mean, yeah, I I can freely admit that 
watching it you could see the little cutout cell where they put the moon in and you could see all the the bad makeup effects and and all of that yes you can pick that it's, but i'm sorry john but but the horrible makeup effects like the the deadites is eons better than the deadites in the uh thir- 2013 remake because let's be honest they only give them some black sludge to gurgle around in the remake and some eye contacts and maybe colored their skin a little bit it, it nothing like the original I, and that is one of my complaints about the remake is i think they underserved the demons they downplayed the demonic aspect of it and made it more zombie-like because they don't talk. And that was one of the most haunting things to me about the original is that your friends became possessed and they tormented you the entire fucking time that they were trying to kill you. That's what was so hard about it was not only did you have these horrifying visuals, but the entire time they're tormenting you verbally. And just that assault on both fronts is amazing. And I I think they kind of missed out on that with the remake. I mean, Mio is really the only one that does a lot of talking once she's possessed. She told her own brother she was going to suck his cock, pretty boy. That's my favorite line in the whole movie. Not surprising. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, I agree. They but they they do talk a little bit, but you're right. It's nowhere near the, the level of torment from the original. I've really only seen the extended cut the last uh, probably in the last two two years or so. So uh, I really think most of their talking is in the extended cut. I think the theatrical really cuts down a lot of their talking. So you don't you're even right. get the couple lines that they do deliver. You're right, and then the most iconic part of one of the trailers was when, was it Maya who was singing the We're yes. Coming to Get You song? Mm-hmm. That's in the trailer, and that's in the extended cut, but that was not in the theatrical cut. So you're mm-hmm. right, and that was a powerful scene. That was an homage to the original movie, so why not have that in the fucking theatrical, you know? I, I have no idea. Um, having said that, one of my other issues with it is it could have been a little more subtle. I, I think it really telegraphs everything because you know oh she's in the shower hurry let's show the book it's gonna flip to the page with the woman pouring scalding water on her okay go back to the shower it's steamy now she's turning the hot water up it's a little bit more subtlety we've seen the fucking book let people put two and two together let that be something they pick up on on the second or third watch it's like oh wait a minute earlier in the movie when he was flipping through the book that that the one picture they cut off their face and the other one they're pouring boiling water on themselves and I, right that, you know, that's really it it it, it uh, not quite at 100 percent to your point but um i know i said earlier that i love the pacing of the 2013 remake but it is not perfect pacing like the original the original starts as a slow burn and it does not let up throughout the entire movie it's the reason why i prefer the original over evil dead 2 because evil dead 2 breaks up the tension unfortunately by going to a different scenario with different characters every so often until everyone comes together at the end but the original that starts and it just does not let up like it just gets more and more tense like a roller coaster ride yeah. starts off okay but once you're going down that steep hill it's it, it, you're, you know what I mean? You're done for until the end. Like, there's no letting up. It's intense. And that's something this one gets... I think it gets pretty right, too. And like you said, the believable scenario, they're going there so she can get clean. That's why they're so isolated. I, I think it all works, and the characters are good. Um, really, I, I I had liked this. I fell in love with it because I'm I'm... I'm a fucking deadite, you know, I'm a hardcore Evil Dead fan, so automatically I fell in love with it, but given a little bit of time, it it had gone down a couple notches, but a friend of mine, uh, Dave Z, he's always said when you go to a remake, when you're watching it, you have to take it on its own accord, not really compare it at all, just watch it as its own film, and the last couple times that I went back and revisited this, That's exactly what I did. I tried to put all knowledge of The Evil Dead aside and just watch this movie, and it doesn't disappoint. It's a fucking fun movie. It's it's so gory. Uh, It gets that right, and I, I feel like it's almost more an homage to a lot of demonic 70s films with how it goes about things than even just The Evil Dead. Like, the way they they approach 
the possessions and everything like that. It if just has this almost 70s feel to it. And God, it's just such a good film. And to your point that you mentioned earlier, Cody, you were saying how it's almost predictable. To a point, yes. But once the sky starts bleeding and the demon comes up out of the ground, I had fucking no clue where this movie was going at that point. Right. Well, real quick, I forgot to mention, uh, when I said that it's kind of predictable, the, what you couldn't predict is who was going to survive at the end, because I thought it was going to be the brother. They even try and fool you, too, because, you know, he shows up, he's dressed similar to Ash. So they're they're playing yeah. all these tricks that making you think this is the Ash type character in this movie. And, you know, for, well, at least the first two acts, he is. Yeah. And then they swerve you, which is a good swerve because you're pulling for Maya anyway. Right. Yeah. They they set her up to yeah. be the sympathetic character right away. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she was addicted to heroin or whatever, but she wasn't committing bad acts in the movie. You know, she was just unfortunately an addict. And uh, you know what I mean? And, and uh, most people are sympathized with that. And, uh, I, and even with me. Again, I'm not going to go too much into my propaganda, but I'm the type of person I don't have much sympathy for drug addicts. But that's neither here nor there. But when it comes to this movie, I did sympathize with Maya. They 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 did it well that they made me even sympathize with her. And I they're not one time throughout the movie I was like, ah, well, she sticks a fucking heroin needle in her arm. She deserves to die. I didn't I didn't think that at all. No, I um, I, you know, so yeah, this good swerve at the end, and I was I was okay with Maya being the the uh. The heroine of the film, as we should say. <laughs> well, real quick, one of the biggest complaints I keep hearing about this film is people can't get on board with the defibrillator. And that just blows my mind. All right. So in this film alone, there's been a guy that's been beat with a crowbar, shot off a nail gun, uh, stabbed. And you're OK that this character is still alive and able to fight. But Lord forbid this guy that is a mechanic builds a defibrillator. And it's something that is canon for this franchise. I mean, we get the fucking awesome montage of, of this. And it's just like fucking Ash making his chainsaw hand. Nobody calls out Evil Dead 2 being like, It is so unrealistic that he created this chainsaw hand and was able to rev it up and kill demons. It's, Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think what the, the thing is, is because when that happened in Evil Dead 2, it was obvious that that movie was horror comedy. Yeah. And in this one, it was supposed to be played a little straightforward. So, but you're right. No matter what, people would have always had uh, a, a reason or a justification to complain about that. I don't fucking care about it. it that, to me, that's nowhere near the weakest point of the movie. Well, my, my wife's biggest complaint, having watched it because I forced her to see it in theaters with me, was uh, when Mia tears off her hand because she's a registered nurse and she's watching that and she's like it it doesn't tear like that she's but that was her biggest complaint is it, that wasn't realistic because skin doesn't stretch and tear like that it's like oh okay well whatever it was fucking cool real quick i'm sitting here talking about how this is one of my favorite movies am i getting her name fucked up it's mia it's not maya it's mia it's mia okay god damn it all right john edit all that damn it no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I mean, again, again, but you can't go into these movies thinking about it like that. You got to suspend belief. That's the whole point of watching a horror film, usually, unless it's based off true events. I, I, I agree, and I, I get so far behind that, and it, it's kind of come up. But the original Evil Dead is my favorite film ever made. Um, I remember when I first bought it on VHS; it was a blind buy. It terrified me. And it took me the longest time to realize that other people didn't find it terrifying. So the thing is with me, if you just go in and immerse yourself into the film fully and just go with it, just give yourself 100% to it, it's fucking terrifying. But if you're just watching it objectively and, and not really just fully giving yourself over, yeah, you're going to you know, be drawn out by the fact that there's a, a cutout moon put in or that you can see where the makeup ends or this or that. But if you're just watching it and, and allowing the story to take you in, 
th these fucking demons are causing these people to rot, and it it's horrifying what goes on. Uh I think the original Evil Dead has aged well because, you, like you said, if you look closely, you can see a lot of outdated material in it. But that helps in a way because then it gives you a sense of comfort before the big, gross, gory finale at the end of the film. That's a, that's a good point, too. But, uh, oh. Jason, we kind of stepped all over you and, and took over, and I, I feel bad. But please, no, Jason, go ahead. Uh, no, you pretty much said everything I was going to, you know, let me put it this way. It's a better made, more polished movie than the first. Not necessarily a better movie. It still hurts just even hearing those words, but okay. <laughs> um, but that's nothing, that's not taking anything away from the first movie because it is what it is. It's half a dozen people who were mostly friends who had a video camera and went off into the woods to make a movie. And it turned out fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no arguing that. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Yeah, and so many people have tried to fucking replicate it that it's not even funny. <laughs> but, all right, uh, it seems like all has been said, so how do we rate this? Well, uh, since you guys made me go last on the first segment, I'm going to go first this time around, you son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> I, I... I you know, just like what Jason said, it's it's not a perfect film, but it, it is better uh, in a lot of ways than the original. I personally would give a uh, four out of five. What do we what do we use? Them? We're not we can't use stars. We got to use something. We got to use something uh, unique. We should have talked about this before recording. Oh, come on. We are perfectly organized. Uh, so you're saying you're going to give it uh, four skulls out of five skulls. Oh, so original. <laughs> is it that don't, I... don't they use that on Rabbit and Red or something? I, I, I don't know. I don't listen to that shit. Oh, God. Who the fuck was uh, co-hosting for two two years there for a while? <laughs> no, we, we just use stars. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I guess for this episode, we'll just use scars. Uh, skulls. Maybe we should use scars. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Maybe we should use uh, wheelchairs. Four out of five wheelchairs. Four out of five mm. wheelchairs, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yes, four out of five for me. All right. Jason. Ah, uh, I am going to give it four out of five heroin needles. <laughs> nice. Damn it, I should have thought of that. <laughs> and I am going to be the highest. I am going to go uh, four and a half Necronomicons out of five. All right. So, and, and nothing tops, nothing tops the heroin needles re reference. Well, uh, yeah. Four out of five OD'd M Mias. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right, Four guys. Four out of five rape tree scenes. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, well, that that's something we didn't even touch upon was the, the... Well, it's not even really a tree rape because the demonic Mia just spits up the vine thing. It's not a tree yeah. rape. So it, it's a little bit more classier in the remake, which I didn't mind. You know, it, it, you still got the same uncomfortable vibe from the original. But, yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's always been the uncomfortable scene showing girls. It's like, oh, I love this movie. You want to watch it? Sure. N Nine out of ten usually leave at the tree rate. Right. Scene. Oh, that's why I can't watch the unrated version of Halloween with any of my friends. It has to be oh. the R rated version. Serious. I don't fucking like that shit. I'd rather see a classic he broke out of, you know, killed the guards. I don't want to see a rape scene if, if I don't have to. I I, but, um, I think that is better. Honestly, I've always wanted to make a, a fan cut of that movie and just kind of change around a couple things like that. So, but anyway. Yeah. Hey, hey, real quick before we leave the subject, why didn't either three of us think to just say four out of five defibrillators? <laughs> Shocking, I know. <laughs> damn damn john it ain't gonna get better than that we should cut it off right here <laughs> all right so thank you guys for listening we will be back at some point uh who knows so until then reach out to us give us a like subscribe all that bullshit until then i don't fucking know and i don't fucking care we're the movie misfits have fun Keep on bleeding, everyone. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. 
I took it as a carry reference. Plug it up. Plug it up. <laughs> plug, plug it up. We <laughs> <laughs> uh. belong, Dan. Oh, God. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Give me a break. John, edit all that, damn it. Go it, go it! Wolfman's got nar! Do not miss this! It's the movie business! <laughs> and we leave all our buttons. Oh, I thought you were gonna say something informative and it was just a dipshit <laughs> joke. Thanks, John. <laughs> still here? It's over. Go home. Go.